Can I just, just ask the audience, who, who else runs a business with their other half, husband or wife? <laughs> a couple. Not many. The rest of you are very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was sort of, I was speaking to Larry out the back. I said, you know, from my perspective, running a running a business with your wife is the most uh, frustrating, demanding, <laughs> rewarding, exhilarating experience I've ever had. And I've gone to five different war zones after 24 years <laughs> in, in, in the military. My big COVID moment, being in the professional services industry. I had a week of client after client phoning to either put their retainers on hold or cancel. And we had $300,000 in conferences that were just wiped off immediately. Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of the Make It Happen show, where it's time for you to make it happen. In these implementation sessions, we're joined by an industry expert who will take you through in detail how to make it happen in your business. These are full of implementable actions. So get your pens ready, take notes, and be ready to apply these to your business. Let's get into it. Guys, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for showing up for yourself and your business today. You guys have given yourselves the best best gift, which is removing yourself out of the day-to-day uh, and coming and learning from some pretty unconventional entrepreneurs as to how they made it happen. We get a lot of you guys, a lot of our audience members reach out and say, Stev, Jack, guys, I'd love to learn a little bit more about your members and how they're currently navigating the waters and, and how they're making it happen in their world and in their teams as well. Um, I'm really blessed and privileged to uh, share the journey with some of these guys, and I can't wait to share their story with, with you guys as well. Uh, I'm really excited to share with you uh, five of my closest friends, uh, and also members of the entourage. Uh, these members are part of our Elite Elevate Evolve communities. We help all stages of entrepreneurs navigate the different stage of business that they're facing through different stage programs. So our Accelerate program is for six-figure business owners, our Elevate program is for seven-figure business owners, and our Elevate Evolve program is for business owners ascending through high growth at seven or eight-figure stage that want to navigate through the next stage to either grow through acquisitions, grow to nine figures and beyond. Uh, the first first lady that I would like to share with you guys and welcome up on stage is Montana. Uh, Montana has been an Elevate Evolve member since 2019 and as Director of Operations at Planet Fitness, she's been leading a legacy of over 90,000 individual memberships and live changes throughout that time. Uh, she's led Planet Fitness into its strongest financial position ever, despite the COVID-19 lockdown uh, last year. Guys, let's give a big entourage warm welcome. Put your hands together for Montana. Uh, guys, the next entourage member I'd love to introduce you to is uh, Mrs. Mel Deacon. Now, she's been an Evolve member since 2019. Uh, her strategic communications agency, Elevate, uh, which is actually the same name as, as our seven-figure program, uh, is one of Australia's most successful independent agencies uh, going around. She's previously worked with some of Australia's and the world's top companies and brands in Europe, Australia and New Zealand. So guys, put your hands together for Mrs. Mel Deacon as well. Mr. Ryan Comerford is up and next. Now, he used to be a professional rugby player that turned industry and business leader. Now, Ryan ascended into the Evolve member in 2019. He's the founder and CEO of Industry Tapware, uh, one of Australia's leading tapware wholesalers. Now, under Ryan's leadership, the business grew quickly and ascended past seven and eight figures in that time. Guys, put your hands together for Mr. Ryan Comerford. Guys, next up we have Mr. Robbie Turner. Now, Robbie has been an Entourage Evolve member since 2018 as co-founder and CEO of Axon Property Group. Uh, they specialize in property investments for ADF members. Guys, let's give a warm Entourage round of applause for Mr. Robbie Turner. Yo! My man, hello. Welcome, mate. How are you, buddy? Good. We have Mrs. Tamara Turner. Now, Tamara is known to be the driving force behind Axon Property Group. Uh, she's been an Elevate Evolve member since 2018 uh, as co-founder and general manager of Axon Property. Uh, under Tamara's leadership, 
Uh, the business was actually recognised as finalist in the Small Business Champion Awards in 2019, 20 and 2021 uh, at the Pro 2019 Property Investor Awards as well. Let's clap Tammy in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome, have a seat. Hey guys, last but not least, I'd love to introduce the CEO and founder of The Entourage. You guys have heard a lot of Jack Delosa today. Let's bring him on one last time. Let's clap him in, team. Yeah. We wanted to shine the lights of our members and, and really give them an opportunity to share their story and how they've made it happen, but also what's been some of the unconventional thinking and strategies that they've used along the way uh, in their journey. So you guys can... Uh, take it away from today and implement it into your world. Uh, there's a lot of our members that we speak to and they're, they're really building one of four key businesses in their eyes. And the first one is, Deb, I'd love to build a lifestyle-driven business. I'd love to get it to seven figures uh, and I'd love to put myself in a position within the business that gives me time with kids, uh, the ability to travel when I can or do other things, right? The second type of business that our members love to build is something that can grow and scale either because they love winning or they want to they have a change in the world. They have a contribution-centric goal in mind, right? So they want to build the big revenue and build the big team in order to make that happen. The third business that our members would love to build is to build a business that's ready for exit, that's saleable, that they can get rewarded for the blood, sweat and tears that they've put into the journey over that time. Uh, there's the fourth one. Uh, that's a bit of an unspoken one, but it's completely cool as well. The fourth one, the fourth one is NFI. Uh, I've got no freaking idea. <laughs> I've been um, grinding hard. I've been trying to make it happen. We should probably come up for air and think about it. Uh, guys, what I'd love to do is throw to you guys, at what point in time did you guys understand what business you guys were building and how did that impact your journey? Um, Tammy, I might throw it over to you. Uh, I guess for a long time it was an NFI business. <laughs> um, I didn't even really believe, like, understand we had a business. I was, I was talking to Jack about this. We got a sign in our office. And when the sign got put up in the office, I was like, oh, we have a real business. <laughs> and we'd already been going for like two and a half years, but it was like that moment. But um, I guess... Our business is, Robbie never wants to retire and I don't want him to retire because God help if he's just got too much time on his <laughs> hand. <laughs> um, so yeah, just growing the business, scaling um, and yeah, bigger and better. Love it. It's and funny, I'm just going to go on a tangent, but I also had one of those, oh my God, I'm actually in business moments and just to the, like it was a sign. In my case, it was a phone. Like we got office phones, this was like 10 years ago, but we got office phones Yeah. and I had a phone on my desk <laughs> and it could connect to the other phones in the office. I'm like, oh my God, I'm actually in business. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. these funny moments. <laughs> and uh, Mel, what, what was that guiding uh, North Star or that guiding light for you? Well, I think for me, I'm an accidental business owner. Mm. I, I never meant to be in business. You know, I had my first child 14 years ago and love what I do, love, you know, running PR campaigns and building brands. So I just thought I'd take a bit of time out and 14 years later, four kids, a house, a mortgage, and as of 10 minutes ago, my very own office. I'm now a landlord, so <laughs> I think today is that moment for me that um, I really am in business. I've, I've <laughs> got a team of 20 and I'm about to have a two-storey office and um, put my sign on the door. Um, and my other thing was also turning 40. You know, I spent so many years in my 30s running this business going, I'm not, I'm not old enough, I'm not smart enough. And then I turned 40, I'm like, oh, I'm grown up now. So <laughs> a couple of um, different moments and t joining the entourage um, really helped me kind of work out what that, that North Star was, what that purpose behind the business and then um, how to build a team around it so that it's not just me running you know the services I do for my clients but now building a team that can deliver what I'm really passionate about mm. and Montana you guys talk a lot about the lives that you guys change in in your business how's that impacted the direction how you guys grow I, th I think it's 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 basically one in the same. I think that um, when you're in the health and fitness industry, you have to take personal growth as business growth also. So our journey has been quite varied. Um, we're a 27-year-old business, and I came back into it as a family business. So in, uh, in 2019, for director of operations, the same year that we signed a joint venture with the biggest fitness franchise on the planet. So it's, it's quite a... 
uh, bizarre uh, trajectory, and I think that what allows you to, to maintain that uh, the vision is making sure that you align with people that not only support your business ethics, but the ethics of what you project to your customers as well. So making sure that we, we are always moving forward with the, with the thought of emboldening those people f that are our customers. So it's, we've been very lucky for sure. Love it. Love, love it. Um, there's some key learning points along the way. Like you guys have gone through some high growth from, from seven to eight figures. Uh, and as you guys can understand and resonate as well, like as the business grows, um, the business owner finds themselves doing more by way of breadth and wearing more hats. And they find themselves being the marketing person or manager for the first time or being the sales manager or looking at being, how do I become the operations manager or the CFO? You know, a lot of the time as the business grows, the business owner's output does as well, unfortunately. Um, and along the way, I know you guys have had some key learnings you know, as to who you are as an entrepreneur how you best serve the growth of your business, uh, where you should be positioning yourself in your organisation as it grows from seven to eight figures as well, right? Um, I'd love to pick your, like your guys' brain, particularly Robbie and Tammy. They've got a pretty cool story about how they figured that out and kind of the impact that that had. Uh, Jack speaks to this and lays a model over. It's called the Visionary and Integrator Model. If you guys haven't read a book called Rocket Fuel, write it down, please do so uh, at the end of today. Yeah. yeah. It is, it's tectonically transforma transformational. It you guys changed have. the way that Robbie and I worked together. Full stop. Full stop. It was really hard because, um, can I just, just ask the audience, who, who else runs a business with their other half, husband or wife? <laughs> a couple. Not many. The rest of you are very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, was sort of, I was speaking to Larry out the back. I said, you know, from my perspective, running a, running a business with your wife is the most uh, frustrating, demanding, <laughs> rewarding, exhilarating, experience I've ever had. And I've gone to five different war zones after 24 years <laughs> in, in, in the military. Um, but now that we've sort of cracked the code, you know, we sort of sat down with Jack when we first started the entourage and he said, look, we're like best friends at home, squabbling in the car on the way to work, hate each other at work, <laughs> squabble in the car on the way home, and we're okay by the time we go to bed. <laughs> like that was the journey we were on and we we're explaining it to you, Jack. And he's like, ran out of his office and he came back, he's like, read that book. Yeah. And it spoke about hey, visionary You actually laughed in our face. <laughs> yeah, like, that doesn't surprise You're me. like, I know what's going on here. <laughs> you were like so chuffed. You're like, <laughs> but um, you also said how amazing it was to have that balance. Like a lot of businesses do need to find that other person, uh, whether you hire that person as your general manager or a senior manager in your business to balance out, especially the, the visionary qualities that um, many entrepreneurs have of, always striving for those big picture goals and not sort of un looking at the minor details and the ripple effects that every detail sort of has. Um, so yeah, Robbie would come up with all these grand ideas and I'd be sitting there going, what the hell is he thinking? Why is he trying to do this to us? And so she's like doubting me. So I'm like, why are you being negative, Nancy? Why are you pulling the handbrake on? Why are you saying no to everything? Yeah, so it wasn't until we realized that uh, and I do say this, uh, if it was Robbie's business, we'd probably be five years in front, but have probably five lawsuits as well. <laughs> and if it was my business, we'd probably be back in year one with a really great employee handbook and OH&S policy. <laughs> 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 so the balance is there. So it, uh, we have been really lucky in that way that we've already got each other to work in that way, whereas I know that a lot of other businesses have had to mm. find that. I think just to add to that, I was literally just having this conversation with a, a couple of business partners out during the break, and uh, one was say, they were saying that one is more drive growth and one is more enable growth, mm. the conversation that we were having earlier. Mm. And, and s similar to the first conversation that we had, they thought it was a challenge in the partnership. And what I was explaining was that's not the... It, it, it is currently a challenge in the partnership. However, it's, it's the very... Uh, magic of the partnership if we've got a model and if we've got language and if we've got tools to yeah. uh, cooperate with one another we actually want to be working with people that are fundamentally different to who we are we should be values aligned but we should be fundamentally different so even those of you that aren't necessarily in business uh, with your other half as Robbie puts it um, it might be a business partner that's not a life partner or it might just be your team a lot of the time you want people that have different opinions. That's the point of building a team. And so from that will arise friction. Uh, and when managed well, that friction creates the best partnerships. 
And to me, that really summarizes beautifully the importance of difference of opinion and tension in any good partnership. Mm. But I guess when you get that friction that you speak about, that's the rocket fuel exactly. which allows you to launch. Right. Hi everyone, I just wanted to jump in here to let you know if you're enjoying this episode, it doesn't need to stop here. We've taken this episode plus all the other episodes and also video footage from the interviews and made it available for free. There's also a bunch of fantastic guides, tools and resources you can use to grow your business. To grab those tools, just go to www.the-entourage.com forward slash podcast. Right, let's get back into the show. Um, Ryan, you're in business with your wife as well. Yeah. Talk, talk to the team about how your journey has unfolded over the last couple of years because you guys have had some really fast growth over the last three years. Yeah, I think for us the important thing was just a real segregation of roles. Mm. Um, she's amazing at what she does. She's the creative director for our Home by Bell business and um, I'm definitely not trying to step on her toes um, and inject myself into areas that I've really got no fucking idea about. Yeah. Um, and I stay in my lane, which is more the commercial side of things and support that particular part of the business for her in that way. Um, but also I've kind of been, um, I guess, the leading force with regards to trying to scale because I could see how much she was in the day to day and, and how her lifestyle was being consumed by the business. So that sort of became our, our North Star was to grow the team to a level where she could focus on the things that were really important to her and that she really wanted to do. So effectively, we just wrote her job description down on a piece of paper. Everything that she didn't want to do became the new GM's role, effectively. Mm. Um, we then went out and tried to, to source an operations manager. Um, and that was kind of the catalyst for us to be able to do what we wanted to do. But really just trying to understand your place, especially with it's, you know, it's your, your husband or your wife or whatever it is in business. If you can work out um, what either of you are good at, stay in those lanes and then you can go home to a, a nice... Yeah. <laughs> One of the little things we put <laughs> in go place, Steph, it, was um, when you're the business owner, right? Or the, I found the business and Tammy quickly sort of followed in behind. Now we're sort of the, the, the joint co-founders. I'm on all the time and I can't stop thinking about the business. No, not yet. Yeah. And I'd get to a point where like nine o'clock at night and the old me used to go blah and just put something on her plate with no word or no warning. <laughs> and she's not in that zone. She's zened out. She's playing a game. She's watching Netflix, whatever else, right? You're relaxing. Yeah. And I put something on a plate and it caused friction, of course, straight away. And I was like, maybe you might try a different approach. <laughs> Hun, I've got a business question for you. When would be a good time to ask you it? They would say, can I ask you a work question? Yeah. And then I would say, no. And then I, five minutes later, I'm like, okay, tell me what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, but, yeah. you guys have had some high growth, but you've had some challenging times as well, right? What have been some of the, not the hard times, but some, maybe the, the times that nearly broke you, um, where you applied some, some wisdom or some unconventional thinking or some guidance, and, and it made a big impact how you navigated through that stage. Well, I can probably attest to that. We were, just prior to COVID, we were looking at so many different opportunities with our design and architectural business, with going into commercial and outdoor and, and all of those beautiful, shiny things we kept trying to chase. And our serviceability started to sort of crumble a little bit. Like we were sort of over committing ourselves across too many parts of the business. Um, I could see the potential in those other areas, but we really needed to perfect what we were doing and go back to those core reasons why we're in business in the first place um, and that was designing and renovating homes and that sort of stuff so that I wouldn't say it nearly broke us but I could start to see things starting to unravel so we needed to kind of nip that in the butt pretty quickly so I guess a word of advice make sure whatever you're doing in business you're doing really well before you start looking at that next opportunity it's always nice to have that vision of, of, of other opportunities and never not explore them, but just make sure that you don't take your finger off the pulse, you know, the areas that are being successful for you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And I think um, to add to that, my big COVID moment, and I actually spoke to Ryan right as um, it was all unfolding, being in the professional services industry, I had a week of client after client phoning to either put their retainers on hold or cancel. And we had $300,000 in conferences that were just wiped off immediately. We had about half our business that was put on hold. And um, it was right at the time that the entourage had just run a workshop around mm. profit first. And yeah. my biggest um, turning point in that moment was know your numbers. You know, I'd been running my business for 
12 years of passion, of I love what I do. It was all around getting success for yeah. my clients, you know, getting them in the media, doing media training, building their brands through digital marketing. And I am not driven by the numbers, but what I learned very quickly is when you've got 12 staff on full-time salaries and you're faced with that moment, yeah. you need to know mm -hmm. what those numbers look like and then make a plan. And thankfully, we, we managed to keep all our team. You know, we didn't, thank God, have any redundancies, but you know, we were reinventing programs. We were hustling. We were doing things on Zoom. And now, you know, we've got a national business with clients all around Australia. Some we've never met in person, which for us was such a, a, a change in, in how we work. Um, but yeah, now I have a chief financial officer on the team. <laughs> he gives me monthly reports. He tells me exactly where things are. And, you know, I, I look at zero every day. I know just the importance as a business owner and an employer, just how much much, you know, you do need to keep that top of mind. Love that. Guys, it was jobs that, jobs that said that you can only connect the dots looking back, right? Uh, hindsight's a hell of a drug. If you guys met yourself 10 years ago or when, when you, before you started the business, what would one piece of advice that you would give your past self now knowing what you know now? And I might selfishly pass to Jack for this one first and mm. throw him under the bus. Good question. This is interesting because I ask this question often. I don't think I've ever been asked oh, it. This could so go for a while as well if I ask. <laughs> <laughs> and this, and this question was not on, on the run sheet. Yeah. No, no, that's why I didn't ask it. <laughs> the number one piece of advice I'd give myself as I was starting out in business. I think it, for me it comes down to... Uh, there will be many voices and many forces that try and steer you down a particular path based on their opinions or their experiences. Uh, and it's really important to get in tune with yourself and live your life in a way that is aligned to that unapologetically. And I don't mean unapologetically externally, but even internally. Sometimes we second guess ourselves because we're going against the status quo, or we're going against you know, societal norms. Uh, I think I would just say, look, Jack, you're going to do that anyway. Have resolve around it and don't apologise for it. Mm, love that. Mon? Yeah, I actually outsourced this question um, to, to my dad, who is the business uh, founder. Um, and obviously, um, I guess I kind of asked, you know, you know, if, would the, if there's a question or if there's, you know, the answer to the question of what would you want to have told yourself and looking at uh, like my, myself and my sister as the next generation, like what can we take on? And um, it was a resounding be human, we are human. Mm -hmm. um, and that's trying something try we're, we're trying to implement. Obviously gyms have been smashed pretty much for the last year. Um, and we've been in, I guess, crisis mode. We can still get shut down at any point. Brick and mortar can be. Mm. Um, but we're now trying to implement time to get away from the business. Uh, family time or time with your loved ones, get away from it, uh, get away from technology, rejuvenate, you know, give yourself time to nature and come back whole. Um, because uh, that's probably the one thing I could have told myself, you know, now if it's me wearing that, is you're going to get through 2020 and you're always going to be able to say, I got through it. Yeah. And if I could tell her, chill out, it's going to be okay, <laughs> go have a weekend <laughs> off, <laughs> you know? So I think there's a lot to be, to be, um, to be that, like to, to give yourself grace for. And I think that that was a big one. And I was actually like, cool, so um, book in the holiday then? Yeah. Now? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, you know, I, I can absolutely echo everything that everyone said here. And it's great that I can take on such wisdom. Love that. Yes. Guys, let's give a big round of applause to our panelists. <laughs> you guys are Thanks, Mike. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Make It Happen Show. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. And it doesn't need to end there. We've actually gone and grabbed a whole bunch of extra resources for you. Behind the scenes footage, videos from this and all the other episodes, as well as show notes that you can grab for free. Just head along to www.the-entourage.com slash podcast and you can grab all those extra resources. Thanks for tuning in and I cannot wait to introduce you to our next guest on the next episode.